Welcome to the Preparing for the ACT 2021-2022 reading passage number one. If you know which question you want to uh, get an answer for, go ahead and jump to that portion of the video. So what we have is we have a literary narrative reading first. <clears throat> and this is important to note because you always want to look at that and you also want to look at the titles. So here it says The Piano Shop and Me and My Violin. So right off the bat we know that okay we're dealing with something that's probably talking about musical instruments. And sometimes that information alone with, with context can actually help you answer at least one maybe one of the questions. So starting with number one in passage A the parenthetical information in line 19 and 21 through 23. So let's go to that. So 19, here's a parenthetical right there in parentheses. And then right, let's see, right here, we've got this. So it says one of his cardinal rules, and then also the worst thing you can possibly do to a piano. So what do they mainly do? Well, it doesn't say how he identifies a piano history, so that's not true. Does it portray him as judgmental? Well, no, because this whole paragraph isn't showing about him being judgmental. It's talking about showing care. And then these aren't rules. These are necessarily rules that people in his shop were required to follow but rather people that he would talk to when he would look at and investigate pianos. Number two, so it says, based on the assertion in passage A that his attitude about how people treated their pianos seemed to mirror his philosophy of life. So that's lines 25 and 26 right here. So which of the following would most likely describe him? Well, it talks about in this paragraph from lines 25 through 34 how he does he understands the damage done to instruments, but he says, he quotes this French phrase, au son de la famille, at the heart of the family. So it's more important for him to expose people to music. And so keeping safe at all times, no. And he doesn't talk about constantly practicing the piano. He doesn't say that. And he doesn't often talk about death, really. It's more just living a full life and participate as opposed to being afraid something might go wrong. Line number, it's question three. At line 32, the phrase bit into, right there. So if I back up to the start of the sentence, it was more than just any piece of furniture, but it was that too. And if drinks were spilled and stains blank shiny finishes, it was the price one paid. If I just take out that phrase, if stains blank shiny finishes, what might be another phrase we could put in here? Well, they give us one. Pinched, stains pinch the shiny finish. I don't know if you can pinch a finish. Ingested, well, stains don't do that. Marred, yeah, that might be a word. Severed, well, that means to cut. That doesn't work. So the one that makes the most sense is to mar. Number four. In the third paragraph of passage B, line 61 to 65, the author most clearly shifts from... So here, what's been happening up till now is, in this first paragraph, talking about an oboist who got rid of the oboe after they were done playing with it, then we've got another one, a violinist, who has a wonderful violin, but they'll sell it to them once they're done making music. But now this paragraph right here, this third one, it says it's a shifts. Because what happens after that is now the author starts talking about him or herself. And so that's why the answer is letter J, Dis discussing the connection with other musicians to pondering their own connection with the violin. Number five, lines 44 through 45. Again, anytime you have a question where it says, all right, go right to there, 
it's instantly telling you, all right, that's where you should be going. So it says the statement that Lishley was not merely an excellent oboist, he was a great artist. He was a great artist. Now, does it go on to talk about what that meant? No, because then it just went right back to talking about the oboe. So this is letter D, an, an opinion that the author asserts but does not explain, because we don't know anything about Lishley's career. We don't have experts that were quoted about Lishley. And this is an opinion that we don't talk about Lishley's colleagues or, and or students. So we're left with letter D. <clears throat> now number six, it says in passage B, it can mostly be referred that Heifetz's, now that right there, I highlighted that because you only see that name right over here. So that's why I highlight it in green. Because when you get to these key words, you want to lock on to them because sometimes they're going to tell you, okay, here's where you should look. Because around question five or six, they stop telling you where to look, and now you have to know where they are. And so for these so six and seven, we're going off based off of these key phrases. So Heifetz, right here, is this last paragraph. And it responds to the woman who congratulates him when he says, Funny, I don't hear a thing. My violin also lies mute in its case without me. But on the other hand, I stand mute in the concert stage without it. So, what is the point of his response? Does he hear the violin differently? Does the woman not qualify to judge his quality of his violin? Does Heifetz enjoy his comments? Or, his point is, the violin doesn't make sounds by itself. That's what he was saying because he was responding to this, what a wonderful sound your violin has, Mr. Heifetz. Yeah. And that was the point of his response. Number seven says, the author may directly, most directly indicates the violin is sometimes an adversary. That word only shows up one time right here highlighted. So that's just cluing you in as to here's where you should be looking. Now, I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit so that we can see both parts of it. Because we have to back up down to this part, this paragraph, which starts down here at the bottom of one page and finishes at the top of the next page. Because the violin stubbornly refuses to do my bidding. When it only reluctantly plays in tune or makes the sound I want or deliver the music's essence for which I strive, then I have to cajole bargain or adjust to its every whim. Some friend, more like an adversary. Okay. So, does the violin lie mute? No, that was question six. That was what Heifetz says. It can't speak with words? No, nope. that, was, that was what he was talking about previously, this paragraph highlighted in gray, which we're going to get to. Responds with a range of emotions? No, it's all about makes him adjust to its whims. Now the last three I've highlighted based on some of the answers in terms of, for number eight, it says compared to passage A, passage B is more directly focused on, well the answer is letter H, but why? And I've highlighted the other three, F, G, and J, because these pieces of information are all found in passage A. So what we've got here for number eight is we have three pieces of information that came from passage A, and then the one odd one came from passage B. So letter F, the damage a musician can do to an instrument. So that's talking about, so that's kind of right over here, and also a little bit in there. The characteristics of an instrument that gives clues to its history. So that's this part. And then the benefits of making instruments available to young children. That is right there. All of those were in passage A. It's only pass, and so by elimination, we have passage H, the interdependence between musician and instrument. And there's hard to point out a single quote. This is more the spirit of that passage. Now, number nine, in contrast to the way the pianos are described in A, the passage's author's violin. So here I've highlighted this in gray. So it says, the violin can't speak with words, 
When I ask something, the instrument can respond with an astonishing rate of substance and emotion. This is friendship on a most exalted level. So the passage authors is described as having a personality of its own. Doesn't talk much about unique characteristics. The sustaining damage, that's definitely from letter A. Similar, so is A. Being important to daily life, no, they don't talk about that. So letter B is the best answer out of these that we have. And finally, number 10. Which of the following is most strongly supported in both passages? So here I've highlighted G, H, and J in red because these details are all found primarily in one or the other. So letter G. Instruments should be revered and never treated like furniture. So that's an idea right here in passage A. Selling your instrument shows disrespect to the music you have made together. So this is letter H. That's that idea. And then letter J, maintaining proper humidity. That is this idea right here. But those are only found in either passage A or passage B. So the one that is in both is familiarity with your instrument is an important part. So with this one, you kind of had to eliminate all the wrong answers to be left with the one right answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out all the other videos on this preparing for the ACT.